Okay, so um, we are at the point where we're, we're transitioning from kind of the, the, the soft quantum mechanics into the, the, the real quantum mechanics, if you will. Um, and I think I mentioned it's, it's almost like a, um, close to, it's not quite a step function, it's maybe more of an arc cinch curve, where we're getting to uh, the much higher mathematical rigor. So um, the, the, the one thing, the one disclaimer I will say is that the, um, I promise that I'm going to get stuck at some point this semester and we're going to have to like, redo lectures or whatever, it happens, and, and as, you, as you guys see, I, I'm not, I, I typically try to avoid using notes because I think it's helpful for you to see how to develop this from first principles rather than from someone reading, you know, like, things that they've wrote before. So um, today is a perfect example of that, and um, I, I gave a disclaimer for, before the previous lecture, but we didn't get to the stuff that the disclaimer was appropriate for. So um, today we are specifically going to discuss de Broglie's hypothesis, otherwise known as the de Broglie wavelength. And um, this is going to actually provide a really intuitive uh, uh, interpretation of, of what the Bohr atom actually means, if you will. So um, we're going to look at the, we're going to apply de Broglie's mathematical uh, hypothesis onto what we've already discussed as far as like the Bohr energy levels and whatnot. And that will actually lead to a really cool Everything kind of comes together here, and I'm going to draw some terrible pictures that uh, when you actually consult the real pictures, like in a you know textbook or whatever, it, it'll make a lot more sense. But but I think it's this is kind of our, our first glimpse that once we avoid our intuition and just let the mathematics kind of roll, that everything does fit together a lot more than trying to figure out what that actually means in our heads. So it, it, it's kind of a fun transition point. And then uh, just as a bit of a pathway here further, um, so this is what I'm kind of where we're redoing the numbering. So um, this, there's going to be about another seven or set, seven or eight lectures here. And the, the, the final set of lectures here are specifically going to talk about the wave mechanical nature of quantum mechanics. And what I mean by that is, as we've seen, there is this kind of what used to be a dichotomy between wave mechanics and uh, uh, particle mechanics is now whatever the antonym of dichotomy is, <laughs> uh, a, a merger or a union of two different ways of doing mathematics that we combine into one, and we do call that wave mechanics. And I'll explain more what I mean by that later, but uh, the point is that we're going to view the Schrodinger equation and the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and in, uh, a particle and wave interference through the lens of basically talking about fa uh, uh, waves and phases. And so this is where we do absolutely have to rely on our mathematical intuition, but the picture that we get out of it, and, and more specifically the predictions that we get out of it, are, are extremely strong and extremely precise, and we have every reason to think that this is a, a, basically a fundamentally correct theory, even though we still don't know why, why it works. Uh, we just know that it does. So uh, let's go ahead and talk, start talking about the de Broglie wavelength here.